Spencer Colgan and welcome to Spencer Colgan's World Day. So we're doing another accent walk in the beautiful Tampa Bay area. And what we're doing right now is the process of skin coating. And we had a, a very uh, thick orange peel texture on the wall. And all I did, because the humidity is so low here, I just put a, uh, a layer of joint compound mix without any additional plaster in it, right out of the bucket, ready mix, put it right on the wall. It's about an hour and change since I last moved this up here and put the first coat, so I'm going to put the second coat, let it dry, we'll prime it, and be ready to put our Philip Jeffries grass coat on top of it. So I'm just going over, once again, the process of skin coating. It's a very simple uh, application of plaster on the surface. If you want to know how to do this, you should practice on the wall in your house. This is a 12 inch taping knife, about 10 to 15 dollars at the box stores at Home Depot or Lowe's. And really, all it is, there's two things that's important when you skim coat. One is pressure, the amount of pressure you put on the, on the knife. You can see I put a lot of body weight into it. Secondly, it's the only other thing that's important. It's the angle at which you hold the knife. Now before we get into this, click on like and subscribe to my channel, please, so that you can see all the rest of my videos. But you have to hit the bell on the right, down below. It'll come up when you subscribe so that you get all of my videos. So now let's talk about skin coat. Why do you skin coat? Well, yesterday I did a video on <clears throat> why you, you don't want to put wallpaper over orange peel or not them. And, and here's the main reason why. Your wallpaper traps air underneath, even if it's going over glass. You know how when you get your windows tinted on your car, what is the, uh, the challenge for the person installing that film, right? It's bubbles, right? And why is that? It's because the material traps air. And so does wallpaper. But unlike the plastic that goes on your, your windows, your tint, your wallpaper actually has a permeable membrane. Who remembers those words from high school, right? But it's a permeable membrane through which oxygen can pass. If it were not permeable, you would have permanent bubbles under your wall cover. But because there were microscopic holes through which the air can pass, most of your trapped air escapes. Okay. But not all of it. The air that remains will sound like you're unwrapping a cookie tray that you get on the holidays, you know that red wrapping. If you rub your wallpaper up and down, you'll have the sound of the cellophane-like wrapper that you take off hard candy. Why is that? It's simply the noise of the wallpaper moving up against the wall. While the paper is secure around it, but there's an air pocket there. And so, and it doesn't look pretty either. So, if you have nooks and crannies on your walls, you want to get rid of them. And the only way to get rid of them is to fill them in. And that's what we're doing here. So if you come up close, the cameraman, you'll see, take a look at that nice flat texture. Just, now I didn't say that, you know, that's, see that nice flat surface? That's two coats of compound. Let me show them the angle I'm talking about. So, you want to get a good stand, right? And if your body's properly balanced, you have about 40 inches of space you can go back and forth, okay? So, this is, uh, 
It's a little hard to deal with because it's firm, so it takes a lot of muscle. But if you want to you want to loosen it up, add a little water to it, but then you have the problem with it falling all over the floor. So now, you're properly balanced. That's tip number one. If you're not properly balanced, you could hurt your back. You want to spread your legs out far because you're stretching your arm back and forth. Okay, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, get a, get a blade width that you can handle comfortably. I have a 12 and I have an 8. This is nice, but it's a little too small. This gives me a wider coverage and I can handle it. So now that's tip number two. Number one is where you stand. Number two is the number, the number of inches of the blade. The third tip I want to give you is how to get the plaster off of here. If I just go like this, I only have plaster on half of my blade. Now watch this. Now I got it on 90%. You don't want it all the way toward the edge. You want it an inch on each side so it doesn't come off onto, onto the floor. All right? Now, there's a couple of ways you can spread it initially. One, you can just take this, throw like that on the wall. So the other one is simply put it on the wall. And then you can make a motion the way the guys who clean the windows make. Because this spreads it around. And now, now I gotta spread out over the course of two and a half feet. I'm not gonna work in very large sections. So we're doing like three by two or three by three at most, right? Always clean your blade off because this stuff dries and then little rocks get in it and then you're dragging rocks through your compound. Here's your next tip, watch this. Sweeping motion, press firmly against the wall and hold the blade at a 25 degree angle or, or just about 25. And you will leave the proper amount of compound on the wall without taking too much of it off. Okay, so that's good in theory, but let's see it practically. Come a little closer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll do the sweeping motion with the blade here. See that? Okay. Now, watch this. If I don't put enough pressure on the blade, watch what happens. That's 90% of you new people who do plaster work. Take a look at that up close. This is a mess. This would have to get sanded. You have to get filled in, okay? Now that's, that's what happens if you don't put enough pressure on it, okay? Now, watch what happens if you put too much pressure. Let me just take this off again. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put too much pressure on it. Watch this. Okay, here's, here's too much pressure. And this is what happens with 90% of new people who do skin coat. Watch this. Now look at the angle, because this is going to make you take it all off. Like it's at a 90. So that's at a 90 degree angle with this. Half of that is 45. That's about 30. Okay, now watch this. Okay, come close. You see these vertical marks on it? You're blocking the sunlight. You see that? You can see those things? If I drag it too tightly against the wall, I now need a third coat. So this, this is where what's called finesse comes in. Watch my sweeping motion again. Now, let me get it spread out. Okay, now the angle. Remember, that's at a 90 degree angle. Half of that is 45. Now, watch the angle. Cleaning off my blade. Moderate pressure. Moderate amount of pressure. Watch the angle that we're doing that. See that? It's all flat. Are 
add in a little water. Look what the water does. How nice it fills it in. Loosens it up, makes it more pliable. The angle matters here. With what angle you use is going to determine how nice and flat your compound is. To spread it, I want to stay close to about an 80 degree angle. Look. That gets it spread out, keeps it thick. Why do I want it thick? I don't want it dry enough. If you put it on too thin and you have a fan going, it's going to dry up too quick. Now I'm going to start embedding it into the wall. Alright, so I reduce the angle. And then and you can go back and forth too. Now we I want to show you something. Just take a look at this. You see this bump here? It's a vertical bump. If I keep going over that, I'm just going to get a buildup of that. So the way you would want to fill that in is to fill in that pump going up and down. Watch this. You see how it filled it in? Because what? Well, it was a vertical line, and so I have to go vertically to fill it in. Okay, so I think I give you, I've given you enough tips. That's all it is. So let's review. Number one, it's how to get the compound onto the blade, and I don't have a lot of it right here. But you use a sweeping motion. This hand is going up, this hand is going down. And so you spread it on the blade as much as you can get it on. Two, the pressure. First of all, you want to spread your legs out sufficiently so that you can move back and forth over the course of about 40 to 50 inches. Thirdly, it has to do with the blade. The size of the blade, pick your blade size, and then the angle at which you hold the blade is going to determine how much compound you put on the wall when you move it. And then after you got that down, it's the pressure with which you apply the compound is going to make the difference whether it's a nice, beautiful, flat surface or it's a little got edges on it where it needs to be sanded. But if you keep practicing, if you employ all of those tactics that I gave you, you will come up with a beautiful flat surface that doesn't have to get sanded. Check it out. If you like the video, click on like, subscribe to my channel, and if you need wallpaper, go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.